the quest to taking your climbing to the next level, few things are more important than developing stronger fingers. Sure, climbing is first and foremost a skill sport, so you must always be working to improve your technique and mental game. When it comes to the physical limitations on performance, however, increasing finger strength is central to taking your climbing to the next level. Before I detail two effective finger training protocols, I want to list for you four reasons why stronger fingers matter. Stronger fingers can grip smaller edges and pockets. Stronger fingers can endure longer when climbing on sub-maximal holds. Stronger fingers can rest and recover on smaller holds mid-route. Stronger fingers have more stamina. They'll hold up better through a long, rigorous day of climbing. So now that I've convinced you on the importance of developing stronger fingers, what type of training does Coach Hurst suggest? If you're a beginning climber, you need to spend more of your time climbing. This way you'll be learning climbing skill while also developing finger strength and endurance. If you are a more experienced climber, however, then you need to spend more time engaging in targeted training of the finger flexor muscles of the forearm. Okay, then let's get to some training. Today you're going to learn two effective fingerboard training protocols. The first is called minimum edge training. I recommend this fingerboard protocol as the entry level program. You'll need a fingerboard with many different sized edges and pockets, and then you'll need to experiment a little to identify what features you can hang on to for just about 15 seconds. Actual training hang should terminate a few seconds before failure of the grip, so I recommend making each hang exactly 12 seconds in length, which is the terminus of the anaerobic alactic energy pathway that powers your maximum grip strength. Initial fingerboard workouts should focus on training with either the half crimp or open crimp grips, although you can eventually add in some open hand pocket and pinch grip training. However, never fingerboard train with the full crimp grip, that is, with the thumb locked over the index finger. The training protocol is simple. Do a series of five 12 second hangs with exactly a two minute rest in between. Each hang should be near maximal, but not quite take you to failure. Begin by doing just two sets, but more advanced climbers can do a total of five or six sets that target other grip positions, including the two finger pocket and pinch grips. Progress over time to using smaller edges and pockets as your strength increases. A period of minimum edge fingerboard training will eventually make you so strong that the holds you would need to train on will be so tiny that it will be painful to complete a workout. Enter the maximum weight fingerboard training protocol. In this program, you'll be using larger, more comfortable holds, but adding weight to your body by clipping weights onto the belay loop of your harness. The ideal size edge for weighted fingerboard hangs is between 14 millimeters and 20 millimeters, or a little less than one finger pad in depth. The moderate grip lessens skin pain, reduces strain on the distal finger joint, and has been proven effective to develop maximum strength gains that will carry over to different size edges on the rock. Here's how to do it. Select a comfortable edge or pocket hold about one finger pad in depth. Your training weight will be the maximum amount you can hold for a 10 second hang to failure, so you'll need to do a bit of testing to determine this amount. The best way to go about this is by hanging various weights, a dumbbell, or a kettlebell from the belay loop of your harness. Anyway, your actual training hang will last just 7 seconds, thus ending a few seconds before your grip fails. The training protocol I recommend is to hang for 7 seconds and then rest for 53 seconds. Do three consecutive hangs in this way makes one set, after which you'll rest for a total of three minutes. Use a stopwatch, zlogboard timing app, or some other method of timing to get the hang-rest intervals correct. It's also helpful to record your training details in a notebook, including the hold size used and the weight added. If you are new to weighted hang training, then I suggest doing just two sets two days per week. Advanced climbers can do up to five sets, but again, only two days per week. It's important to recognize that weighted hangs deeply stress the nervous system and complete recovery can take several days. Therefore, this is not a training technique to use within two or three days of a trip to the crags 
for some performance climbing. A final comment from Coach Hurst before we wrap up this episode. Rule number one in training for climbing is don't get injured. So I want to leave you with four tips to reduce your injury risk while fingerboard training. You can reduce your injury risk by performing a progressive warm-up that gradually builds from easy full body activity to difficult climbing specific moves, making a conscious effort to avoid painful or injurious feeling holds, always train with good fingerboard technique, maintain a slight bend in your elbows and engage shoulders. Do not allow your shoulders to relax or rise up into the shrug position. Rest more than you think you need to. Three to five days of aggregate training and climbing per week is more than enough doing any more temps injury. Well, that does it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to learn more about training for climbing or reach out to me directly, do so at my website, trainingforclimbing.com.